Hi, my name is Ed Shad, curator of The Broad in Los Angeles, and I'm here to talk to you today about the artwork Corner of Desire and Piety, 2008, artist Mark Bradford's reflection on the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. Like so many others, I watched Hurricane Katrina strike the shores of the Louisiana Bayou and New Orleans on television. It was the morning of August 29, 2005. At first, the storm appeared with high wind and bent trees, but its violence continued to grow. Soon, the storm blotted out most cameras, as well as the sun. The day seemed to turn into night right in front of my eyes. Later that morning, the levee around New Orleans broke and flood waters started to build. For me, the worst moment of that first day was watching a single camera trained on the outside of the Superdome, full of people inside who I could not see. I thought of so many outside of that stadium, out in the water and in the wind, without any shelter at all. When the wind stopped, the human suffering was just beginning. Over the ensuing months, on the heels of a botched federal response to the hurricane, the people of New Orleans would experience death, the loss of livelihoods, increased poverty, massive rates of homelessness, and migration throughout the United States. 400,000 people, high rates of which were among New Orleans black communities, were permanently displaced. Three years later, in April of 2008, Los Angeles artist Mark Bradford wrote the words, Help us! on the roof of a building on Wilshire Boulevard. The words echoed similar SOS messages found on the roofs of the house of stranded residences of New Orleans after the hurricane. Bradford's message was clear. The headlines about Hurricane Katrina may have become less prominent in our national consciousness, but Katrina was not over. Suffering remained. A lot of suffering. Help us was another way of saying, do not forget those who continue to struggle in the aftermath of this horrible storm. Disasters have a horrible effect. They reach our consciousness on television in a visual and direct way, but then we slowly lose sight of them over time. They can happen quickly. However, recovery is long, difficult, hard fought, and largely unseen. For some, recovery is impossible. For some, scars are sadly permanent. Mark Bradford's encounter with Hurricane Katrina was very personal. Invited to participate in the citywide art exhibition Prospect New Orleans, Bradford visited the city's Ninth Ward. What he found was continued devastation. A year after the storm, entire neighborhoods were abandoned. Most of the buildings remained destroyed. And so many of the people that he met had lost everything. One of the artworks that Bradford made in response to Hurricane Katrina is The Corner of Desire and Piety. The artwork is a grid of 72 panels, all made in Bradford's technique of building up a surface out of paper and collage material, then grinding the same surfaces down to create an unexpected abstract effect. The main material in the corner of Desire and Piety are signs that Bradford found across New Orleans after the hurricane. The signs say, Propane delivered to FEMA trailers. If you know the work of Mark Bradford, you know that often his large works feel like maps. To give some examples out of the Broad Collection, Bradford's Helter Skelter gives reference to the sprawl of Los Angeles at the moment of the Charles Manson murders in 1969. The painter's 
scorched earth remembers the burnt landscape of the city of Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1921, after white rioters destroyed its vibrant, thriving black business community, nicknamed at the time Black Wall Street. In Corner of Desire and Piety, the map of New Orleans does appear, but the reference is somewhat buried. The desire and piety of the title are both streets in New Orleans, running parallel to each other in the Ninth Ward. They run right through the part of the city worst hit by the hurricane. Actually, there is no corner at the streets of desire and piety. And so we as viewers of the work are left to consider what this title may mean. The work is a grid, and a grid suggests order. The stacking of squares or rectangles provides a structure. Early in Bradford's career, he was inspired by the works of Agnes Martin, who interpreted the dry expanses of New Mexico through grids made of fine pencil lines. In that same spirit, early in his career, Bradford would build grids from end papers that he used at the hair salon in which he worked. Corner of Desire and Piety picks up this theme of the grid, also displaying a sense of order. Its 72 panels also stack. However, considering the history of the Ninth Ward and Hurricane Katrina, Bradford hints here that the ultimate theme is what order leaves behind. Who is left out? Who is ignored? Who lives outside of order? who is exploited by order. Those posters, propane delivered to FEMA trailers, refer to the informal economy that arose in the wake of the storm. This economy thrived on the horrible encounter between survival and exploitation. Price gouging, predatory lending, misappropriation of funds, an unequal distribution of relief money and supplies were all endemic to life in post-Katrina New Orleans. This horrible aftermath of the storm is exactly what Mark Bradford does not want us to forget in the corner of desire and piety. He does not want the story of Katrina to be lost. He wants us to remember the people that suffered there, the city that continues to rebuild, Ultimately, he wants us to know that every disaster has a long recovery and that we should work together to achieve it.